morning. Good morning to everyone. I have to say that it's a pleasure to come back to the school and uh, after many years for the first time not uh, for parent and teacher meeting because my three kids studied here and I still remember some of the conversation which been pretty difficult. But the good news is they got such a great education in this school that they are doing great uh, be it at the university or the in the professional life. But today we are going to discuss here the future of Europe. You have uh, questions and ideas about how the world would look uh, 20 years from now. And um, you know, when you want to talk about the future, it's always very important uh, to be aware of the present. What's really going on? What's going on in my community? What's happening in my country? What are we doing in Europe? And how can we actually make an impact on the world? And um, therefore, when we are trying to understand the present, we always have to learn from the past, from our history, because uh, I'm sure that your history teachers told you that if you won't do that, the history has a bad habit. It tends to repeat itself, and unfortunately, very often, not the most glorious chapters. And therefore, I'm not going to give you another history lesson, but I I'm just going to tell you how I was what I did in your age. At that time, I was living in Bratislava. My parents, my grandparents loved me. I was doing my sports. And only gradually I noticed that uh, every morning I am passing by the big fence which was there on the bank of Danube. I saw the barbed wire. I saw soldiers. I saw attack dog. And I saw the country behind that uh, fence. I saw the lights. I saw the cars. You can even see the people. But for us, that country, the Austrian I'm talking about, was in a super distance because we just thought we would never be able to cross the river to go around that fence and just to talk to the people on that side. Of course, and in uh, those days, uh, the people have been coping with the stress, with the regime, with the humor. And we even had the so-called golden bar jokes, meaning that if you are caught to tell it, you can really end up in the prison and definitely the bars wouldn't be gold. But you can still get the price for a good joke. And the joke about this iron curtain, about this fence, was that the son was actually asking his father, Daddy, who is behind the bars? And the answer was, son, we are. We are in our parts of Europe. So therefore, if I would fast forward uh, um, to 1989, then the atmosphere in the country, the continent changed dramatically. And it was because of the students like you, because actually it was the young generation, the students from high schools, from universities, who brought democracy to Central and Eastern Europe. In Czechoslovakia, at that time we called it uh, Velvet uh, Revolution. And uh, the fact was uh, that uh, what this young generation brought to the country and the, to the continent was something unbelievable. It was the feeling of freedom. It was uh, the feeling of hope. And we suddenly felt that we have the future, and future much brighter than one we thought we would ever have. Going to 2004, we joined the European Union, so-called uh, new member states. And, uh, and then I have to say that for many people in the Europe, this was a strong feeling that the mission is to a great extent accomplished. Because for me, the peace and European reunification are the major achievements of our European integration and of our European uh, cooperation. As you know, each generation has a big task to change the world. That's a task for your generation as well. If you look at what we have uh, accomplished, you might say that we could be pretty satisfied. We reunited the Europe, we made it free and whole, we created the biggest economy on this planet, which is the European one. We are behaving responsibly, more and more responsibly towards the environment. We are taking care of the countries and the peoples who are poorer, and we believe that it's our responsibility to take uh, good care of them. So the question would be, are we done? Can we be happy everything was resolved? And here I would say definitely not. And your generation will go through such a transformation through such a change that for us it's even difficult to imagine it right now. Because we have invented uh, algorithms and the machines uh, 
which can work for us, but we have not figured out yet uh, how they will work in the future with uh, humans, how it would work with this new social media platform, with these opinion bubbles to which the algorithm of this uh, social media is pushing every one of us, and how to make the democracy work in this system. We accumulated tremendous amount of wealth on this planet, but we are absolutely unfair in how we are distributing it. How is it possible that today in 21st century you can have 62 people on this planet who owns more property, more money, more wealth than half of the human population? And then how about the pigs? We are so proud about it here in Europe. But we know that it's uh, still a task upon which you have to work every day. Just look around our borders and look how our political systems are coping with the big problems, with the current sometimes strange mood in Europe. We have again extremists, we have anti-Europeans, we have racists, we have uh, radicals in our societies. And thanks to this new media platform, they're getting the coverage they, they couldn't dream of, dream of just a few years ago. And then, of course, we are strong in industrialization. We have uh, automation, robotization, digitization. But at the same time, we have a people who are in social distress. And by the way, we are still using more than 80% of the fossil fuels in our energy mixes as we used 40 years ago. So these are all the challenges which will be very much forming the future of Europe and future of planet. So we need, if my age, the number one question was geopolitics. Will there be a war? How these two worlds, East and West, uh, will cope together? For you, it will be how to cope and combine this new technology with working democracy. How we can use the technology really for the benefit of the mankind. How we can combine that drive for better future, for the creation of more wealth with responsible environmental policies. And how can we make this world fairer and uh, better place? And therefore, when you ask me the question to prepare for the discussion uh, with you and for the lecture of today, how the Europe, how the world will look in 20 years. That's actually the question I should ask you, because it will very much depend on what you want to do with your life, with your community, with your country, with your continent. How are you ready to engage in local debates, in community work, in volunteering, in really showing the good example? How are you ready to fight for our European values? Are we ready to speak up against something really bad happening in our en environment? Are we ready to elect good people who really deserve it and who would think about the future and about the positive development of our countries and the continent? I myself, I believe that uh, the Europe will continue to be the best place on this planet to live in, as it is today. The cleanest, first, the best place on this planet. And I also believe that uh, we will continue to build fairer and fairer society that will be responsible with our Mother Earth. And I also believe that we will see in the European more countries than we have right now. Because we know that in Europe, if we export stability, we always get positive payback. But if we want export stability, we might be very much exposed to the possible instability which is coming from our uh, neighborhood. So therefore, I truly believe that we in Europe will remain to be the world leaders in how to make uh, our world a uh, cleaner place. We will be number one in clean energy. We will be number one in how to integrate these renewables into our energy systems. I really believe that by 2030, each third car on our road will be car which will be clean with zero or low emissions. I believe that we will have the best infrastructure for not only charging these new clean cars, but also for connected and automated driving, which probably you or your kids uh, will bring a new question. Do I really need a driving license or I just use my app and the self-driving car will take me where I need. And I also believe that we will continue to be responsible to the poorer people uh, in the world because we know that uh, the world, the economy is in a position 
to really make sure that everyone on this planet would have enough and would have a decent, decent life. How are you going to cope with all of that? I have a full confidence in your generation because you are first generation, what we call digital natives. And I'm sure that your parents do the same as I do with my three kids. There is a problem with a smartphone, give it to your son, he will fix it in a minute. If you are frustrated uh, uh, with uh, Apple TV or uh, with uh, any of the technical stuff you had at home, mother called her daughters to help her to fix it. So we know how this works. There is only, I would say, one warning to tell you. You have from time to time to get the eyes of the screens, to look around yourself, to check if there is not some other source of the news. If the news which the algorithm are feeding you, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or whatever social media you are on, if it's really objective one, if there is not some other opinion, if you shouldn't be aware of uh, the discussion which is going on in this topic. Because when we get ourselves framed, closed uh, in these opinion bubbles, as we have seen in some very uh, famous elections or referendum campaign, then our democracy is getting limited because you do not have that healthy debate, that healthy exchange uh, in between uh, the, the political opponents, uh, political parties, or even within civic societies because you simply have the people who are 100% convinced that this is just eternal truth forever. Therefore, we need to work consciously on being objective, getting the information from different sources, being engaged, being active, and to talk to the people, because I still believe that this is the best way how to uh, communicate uh, in the future. I believe that uh, you are excellently equipped uh, for this new world, which sometimes for our generation is simply too fast, is too technologically uh, driven, and it depends too much on uh, uh, these new, uh, uh, new media, new gadgets, new, new technologies. But you are different. And I know that because, as I said, I have three millennia, uh, millennials uh, at home. First, you are not afraid of the fast uh, past change. You embrace it. For you, it's natural environment. And I see that if you do not find inspiration in the country you live in, you change it. You are not afraid to travel. You are not afraid to study abroad. You are not afraid to uh, look for the job in another country or to just go for the weekend with your friends uh, and, and spend a good time somewhere in a completely different, different place. And therefore, I'm glad that uh, our generation could make the whole Europe your continent. That's your home. You are free to travel. You are free to study. You are free to work. And therefore, I believe that you will also feel this responsibility, not only for your community, for your country, but also for your continent. And in many cases, what I have witnessed and what I have seen is that uh, you are not in expectations, you do not expect to be given a job. You are very good in creating the new ones. And if I look at uh, what are the top 10 professions which uh, currently all the human resources departments are looking for, these are actually the professions which didn't exist 10 years ago. So if you are in IT, if you are in biomedicine, if you are in data uh, analytics, if you are in any of these technical fields, uh, you're, you're absolutely guaranteed that the companies, the firms will be fighting for you. But you even probably would not be interested in that because today you can create your own ideas, you can create your own job. And therefore, I think that for this fast changing, this uh, uh, world under huge uh, the development where the digitalization, where the sharing of, of, of knowledge is bringing us to the new pace and the new possibilities will be something which your generation will be able uh, to embrace. You are excellently equipped uh, with uh, languages. I remember how tough uh, was it uh, for us to learn English, to learn French, because there was no Google Translate, there would be no video tutorials. You had a dictionary, you had a teacher, and you had to study hard. And on top of it, you never knew if you would use the language in real life or not. For you, it's natural to speak in different languages, and you don't see it as a barrier. You see it as a link. You see it as something which connects you, connects you to, your, to your friends. And uh, I also um, 
I'm absolutely convinced that uh, from the fact that uh, you know so well your friends from other countries, that you can compare the lives, that uh, you shared uh, so much uh, time and moments, or here in the schools, or on your travels across the Europe, that you would feel something which is this European sense uh, of belonging. That we actually are one continent which has a big responsibility, not only for us, but for the planet. And I am absolutely convinced that the next decade would be crucial from how from the point of view how the world would look like. Who would be winning, presenting, convincing with the arguments, with the results, the, the rest of the world? Would it be China? Would it be United States? Or would it be Europe? And I believe that uh, world needs the European lifestyle. World needs European social responsibility. Europe need the world needs Europe's feel of fairness. And the world need also our technologies, our bright people, our, our people with a great linguistic skills and that feeling of empathy when you are talking uh, to the people coming from the other continents. So with all that little list of tasks, uh, I really would like uh, to wish you lots of luck. I would like to wish you good choice uh, uh, of your universities. And I would really plead with you, please be engaged, be interested, be informed and be as active uh, as you are today when you are organizing these uh, uh, talks uh, where the people like me are extremely glad that you are ready to listen, that uh, uh, you want to share your views, that you want to share your impressions about how the society is evolving because in few years you will be not only the young people, you will become the young leaders and uh, the Europe and the world will very much depend on you. To which I really would, would like to wish you the good luck, all the best and thank you very much for your attention.